Hello, Hello everyone. everyone. I'm Mike Stone. And I'm Priscilla Van Cap. And we're from Better Cloud's Expert Advisory Group. Oh, I don't have a clicker. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so we're going to be telling stories from the IT trenches. So, uh, as David was saying, we started this team about a year ago with the goal of helping everyone and all of our customers use more of Better Cloud. So, in that time, we've uh, met with over 100 customers. We spent over 600 hours with those customers. We've seen literally everything there is to see. We know how our customers use the platform. We help them get the most out of it. Everyone on the team is certified in Okta, Google, uh, G Suite, Microsoft. So we're, we're experts. And uh, again, in that time, we've identified five risk areas that we want to talk through today uh, that we've seen in our customers' environments. So we're going we're gonna to talk through what those risk areas are and how you can use Better Cloud to help out. So why stories from the IT trenches? Well, as Mike just mentioned, over the last few months, we've met with plenty of you. And coming out of that, we've got plenty of stories. Um, stories that we thought were really important to share with you all, first of all, to give you an idea of kind of what's going on in the IT landscape, and also to help you identify these in your own environments. Um, so we're going to kind of follow a structure today with all of the risks that we're talking about. We're going to start out with a story, um, so something that we've seen on one of our implementations. Then we're going to show you how to identify that risk. And no need to pull out the pen and paper and take a ton of notes. Um, we've actually got these amazing implementation guides that we're going to send to you directly after this, showing you step by step of how to set up and run and find every single one of these. So after that, we're going to show you how to remediate that risk really quickly so you identify something and you want to deal with it then and there. And then we're going to show you how to ultimately automate that. Because that's our goal, right? To lessen the burden on you as IT professionals and show you how to get this stuff done fast. OK. So as we go through these stories, automation can come in, in two different forms, really. There's the light version. So when something pops up in your environment, you can simply be notified of it via email. Uh, you can be notified through a Slack message or something like that, maybe a webhook or even a Zendesk ticket. For today's presentation, we're going to be going through the more advanced version of, of these remediation steps. So that can be revoking access from somebody or something, changing or updating some setting, uh, or removing external collaborators, that kind of thing. So taking action directly on the thing that triggered the alert. So let's go through the five common risk areas. Uh, these are in no particular order, uh, but let's kick things off. All right, so first common risk area that we see on almost every single one of our implementations is one that we've talked about a little bit today across the presentations, but it's email forwarding. And we see this in two big forms. The first is either we'll see end users forwarding their entire email inbox to personal accounts or something like that, and be it malicious or not, it's certainly against some of your internal company policies. The second version kind of takes it a step further, and we'll see end users forwarding specific parts of their inboxes through filters. So that's exactly what happened with this next implementation. Um, story here is we were working with a really fast-growing real estate company of over 3,000 users digging into Better Cloud, looking at their email forwarding alerts, and we found that over 200 of their users were forwarding their entire email inbox. And of those 200, kicker, three of those were their top, uh, like top tier C-level C-suite execs. And I think what was most concerning to the customer, another layer to this, one of their worst offenders was their senior sales leader who was forwarding everything that contained a subject title of leads to their personal email account. So <laughs> make of it what you will and what might be going on there, but definitely a red flag. And I think the second level of concern with email forwarding, and something that I've discussed with some of you in this room over the last couple of days is, Working through the list of people who are forwarding their email, end users often find, or IT folks that we're working with will find that people are on that list who no longer even work at the organization. So let that settle in and think about your offboarding workflows. Is email forwarding something that you're thinking about? Is it something that you're disabling when someone leaves? So how do you identify that risk? Well, in app.bettercloud.com, we've got four great alerts um, specifically targeted to identifying email forwarding. And from those alerts, you'll get 
a full list of everyone forwarding their email, where they're forwarding to, and if it's set up on that kind of global level like we were talking about or in that more filtered down version. What do you do with that? So to remediate it, you can set up a really simple workflow like what you see on the screen. Use any of those alerts and just set up a workflow that sends you or your security team an email notifying you the moment email forwarding is enabled. And to automate that, take that workflow one step further, use that same alert, and put in an action that automatically disables email forwarding anytime you see it. OK, so the next risk area is overextended privileges. So yesterday, Sean presented uh, his scorecards. And I'm sure everyone saw some alert uh, about who has super, or, yeah, super admin access in which system. And that number may have been higher than you expected. So we'll talk through. Uh, talk through that a little bit. So customer story here is uh, there a customer I was working with. They had an office manager who just needed to manage calendar resources, really. So <laughs> for some reason, they were given full super admin access to the domain. And uh, yeah, red flags everywhere, right? And I'm sure everyone can see where this is going. What ended up happening is they were wandering around in the admin console, somehow stumbled onto the drive page. And I'm not kidding, they accidentally, I don't think it was malicious, but accidentally set the default sharing permission for drive documents to domain-wide. So it was a little bit of time before they realized, and, and uh, keep in mind, every single file created in that time, everybody at the domain can see. So they came to Better Cloud, we helped them remediate everything, but it was, it was kind of a mess. So how do you identify this risk? Uh, you can look at Sean's scorecard, or you can go into Better Cloud go to the user's grid, and there's a column for role. If you filter that column down to admin, you can see who your admins are across all of your different connectors. Now, how do you remediate that risk? There's a few ways you can do this. So in g.bettercloud.com, you can create a, uh, an access role. And with that access role, in this case, they could have just given this, uh, this office manager access only to calendar and nothing else. Well, before that, remove their admin access. That's the quickest remediation step. <laughs> then create this access role. In app.bettercloud.com, you can create a similar privilege. Uh, in this case, you can see uh, the role we are creating gives the person full access to Google and maybe limited view only access to other systems like Slack, Dropbox, Box, uh, et cetera. Uh, Another interesting use case I've seen and I've set up with some of our customers is, uh, and, and I'm curious, how many create separate admin accounts for, uh, for admin purposes, maybe for auditing purposes? So it may be admin.user at domain.com. Perfect. So what you can do is you can create, customize an alert in Better Cloud that will say when somebody's given super admin access, if that email address does not contain the word admin or whatever your prefix is, then fire off the alert. Now, to make this super powerful, we can turn this into a workflow and say whenever that uh, alert is triggered, take these steps. So send a group an email, optionally wait for an hour just to make sure you, know, you don't uh, take any action too quickly, and then ultimately revoke their admin access. All right, our third big risk is exposed sensitive information. Um, and what that most commonly means is exposed personal information, like social security numbers or PII, um, exposed payment information, like credit cards, or keywords that are just important to you as a customer because they relate to some of your internal projects. And while those things aren't inherently risky, they certainly can be when combined with something like public sharing. Um, so this next story is one that kind of sits with me personally, too. It was one of my first implementations. And just to give you a little background, I came from a healthcare kind of IT consulting background. And so working with this customer was really the moment for me that was like, wow, why better cloud and what value can you bring to the table? Um, we were working with this huge behavioral health network, um, and they were initially just looking for exposed social security numbers. So we ran a drive DLP audit, just kind of looking for that. And what we ended up stumbling into was over 200 documents um, containing patient name, patient social security number, their entire medical history, basically anything you could need to identify this person. And every single one of those documents was publicly shared. Um, so this was pretty huge, and I think what we ended up discovering here, too, is that 
it illuminated some of the business practices for the customer. Um, this was just, turns out, one of their smaller domains that we were working with, but we're now working with them to figure out their other 50. All right, so how did we even find that? Um, like I mentioned, we just set up a really simple drive DLP audit in g.bettercloud.com, like the guys were talking about in our last presentation, something that's super easy to do, and that gave us a really comprehensive list of every single file that contains a social security number. To quickly remediate that risk, again, from that comprehensive page, you can just check off the documents that are concerning to you and take a bulk action to change those sharing settings from um, public to domain only or private. And to automate that, just take that same audit and flip it into a policy, something that any time it's detected automatically will change those sharing settings and kick off external collaborators. Fourth big risk, external shares, kind of related but different. And again, we've seen this in a couple of forms. The first is we'll find that people are either sharing files with personal email addresses or full extreme sharing with competitor domains that you'd be really concerned by. So story here is we were working with a biotech company um, specifically concerned about competitor sharing. So we went into their drive, typed out the first competitor domain, no hits, no problem. Second competitor domain, no hits. We're thinking, all right, we're in the clear, nothing bad going on here. Third competitor domain, lo and behold, we find that an employee from a recently shut down department who went to go work at a direct competitor was sharing um, files containing incredibly proprietary information with her work account at that company. Um, this was a huge moment for this customer, shut down the call, went to go bring in their security team and kind of deal with it for the rest of the day. To identify that risk, like I mentioned before, you can use our Drive DLP tools. Um, but the other thing is that if you've got Dropbox or Box or Slack in the mix, with this and the use case before, you can use our files grid in app.bettercloud.com and just filter down in that shared with column to give you a full list. To remediate that risk, again, simply pick off the files that are concerning to you and use our action engine to update the sharing settings all at once. And then to automate that and take that a step further, you can use any of our file alerts um, to identify files and folders that are concerning to you, ones that are from a file path that contains the word confidential or HR or anything like that, and set up a workflow to automatically pull back those sharing settings anytime they're detected. Okay. The last area I'd like to speak about is IT operations. So these may not necessarily be risks, uh, but they're more day-to-day -day tasks that you can use Better Cloud for uh, to save you some time and, and save you some maintenance steps. So first customer story, how many are on Slack? How many allow your end users to create public Slack channels? OK. And how many have a, a Game of Thrones season five, episode three channel that has no members in it or something similar? <laughs> OK, great. So <laughs> we see a lot of this. When we work with customers, and I'm sure you saw this on your scorecards, hundreds, maybe thousands of empty channels. Uh, so real problem there is it's just messy, honestly. So how do you identify this risk? Go into Better Cloud. Go to the groups grid, and there's a column for member count. First thing you do is uh, filter connector to Slack and uh, see all of the channels that have less than one member, and it'll give you that list pretty quickly. From there, you can select all those channels, go to the action engine menu, and archive the channel. It's pretty quick, painless. Now, how do you automate this? So this is probably one of the more common workflows I set up for our customers. Um, and I'm pretty sure I've set it up with some of the folks in this room. So we have an alert for when a channel becomes empty. So when that fires off, send a channel a message to the channel and say, is there anyone home? If not, let IT know or this will be gone in three days. <laughs> Wait three days and then archive the channel. One other, uh, one other topic to speak to is Google Groups. How many have spent time in the G Suite Admin Console managing Google Groups? How many think it's a miserable experience overall? Great, thank you. So, <laughs> also, one other question. How many allow your end users to create groups? Okay. So, when you're creating groups, 
given this experience, it can get messy. You can misconfigure the settings. You can do things accidentally. And uh, going back to Nikem's slide from earlier, uh, you don't want to end up on the news because your group is overexposed, right? So we have a few alerts in Better Cloud uh, that will show you maybe if your group is overexposed, if it's allowed to be posted to by the public or uh, allows for external members, things like that. So I I'd recommend leveraging these alerts. Um, when you click into these alerts, you'll see all the, all the groups that match that criteria, and you can use Action Engine to uh, quickly take action on those and bring them down to compliance. Now, the automation I recommend here is it's a simple one. If you have a, a default set of permissions that you want all of your groups to have when you create them, just create a workflow that says whenever a new group is created, set those permissions. And this allows you to do two things. It gives you peace of mind if you, if you mess up in the admin console or wherever you're creating the group. And number two, it allows you to empower your end users, right? You can let them create groups within your organization and not have to worry about them making it public or adding external members, things like that. Um, so, so, <laughs> that's what we have for you today. Again, as Priscilla mentioned, uh, we have all of these uh, written out in the form of guides. If you head to this URL, bttr.cl slash guides, we have these awesome step-by-step uh, -step guides on how to set everything we went through today up. One other thing, uh, do you want to work with us? We're awesome, I promise. Uh, if so, go into the app and just vote yes or no. Just you don't have to click no, if, you don't have to offend us. Just yes if you are interested. <laughs> and uh, your CSM will reach out and we'll be in touch. Thank you.